All right, man, we're back. We are back. Pink Floyd, Pink baby. Pink Floyd. I'm excited about this. Uh, so the Floyd. This all started, I was at the gas station, and you were like, dude, have you heard this remix? <laughs> I was like, no, but I'm going to listen right now. Yeah. And I got through uh, about half the album or so and finished it later. But it that was the digital listen that doesn't count. That was on Spotify. Right. So this we already listened to. Um, so, you know, go back and, yeah. and listen, so, watch this episode. So now we have the updated, the updated version, which, uh, the camera's not on right now, but that's fine. Cause it's going to look back and it's like magic. There we oh, go. whoa. There we go. What that's happened? Jamie. Yeah. Look at that. They're, um, they're deconstructing. What do you interpret the differences as, uh, here? Oh, between the artwork? Well, yeah, see all the, the cranes on this version. Um, yeah, well, uh, this glass. is, I think this is supposed to be what Battersea Power Station looks like today. Okay, uh, okay. Which um, I think much of it has actually been converted over into, like, apartments or something like that. Yeah, that must be these things over here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's, uh, it's definitely, quite definitely different. different. Yeah, it's not as, uh, I mean, it's still pretty ominous looking, but... Uh, I mean, partially probably because of how just gray everything looks. Yeah, that is uh, the color difference is, <laughs> yeah. is uh, also a notable contrast uh, for sure. Um, then the back as well, quite a uh, quite a few differences yeah. there. Just way darker, but more uh, in the in the previous version, but more gray in this version, like the cloudiness. This almost looks like smoke and pollution. Mm -hmm. This, which that might be smog too, I don't know. Yeah, it definitely shows, I guess, the differences that have happened in 40 years. So, uh, this came out in 2018. Um, well, it, it was remixed in 2018. It didn't come out until just a couple weeks ago. Okay, so it just dropped. Okay, right, so right. that's it why we... It just dropped. It's the, it's the 2018 remix, but it just came out in 2022. And it says because of maybe... Uh, oh, hey, did you perhaps... Uh, which I know, uh, not everybody listens to Jogan's podcast, but Roger Waters, ironically, I, was just on there. Right, you told me about it. I, I haven't watched it yet. I did read a few articles about it um so yeah he's talking a lot about the um palestinian conflict on there um israel yep and like how he became aware of it and like things that he saw mm -hmm. and then uh also talks a bit about U the ukraine war like i think he reads yeah. this uh he re he does he reads this letter that he wrote to vladimir putin on there and Anyway, but just interesting that that's, uh, like, he was on that CNN interview, shorter for him, but, like, this was uh, two and a half, three hours long. Yeah. So then he had a concert that night, and we were supposed to go see him just this last weekend, but it's like we bought the tickets before COVID. And right. We've got all this other stuff going on, like, from here until the end of the year on the weekend, so opted not to drive to Dallas. Um, but, okay, well, let's get going here. All right. All right. Uh, th so, sick liner notes with this one. We didn't have that with the other wait, one. Wait, we're on the wrong side. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, <that's, you> know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that that doesn't sound like. Man, this is a remix. You know? Wow. Change the track order. Wow. Yeah. This this definitely is. They they interpolated <clears throat> other parts of songs. Yeah, but Here awesome, awesome liner notes. Um, way more. Okay, so look. Oh, we got the comparisons. Yeah, the original yeah, cover. Yeah, that's the cool. OG cover. And uh, also some uh, some info on the album uh, or right. on the photos here at the bottom, like little footnotes. This is interesting. Yeah, it kind of, okay. Got I the, think it's just yeah. I think it's about like the artwork. I think that's what these these uh, what this booklet yeah, is. Yeah, like the photography that went yeah. into the pig, right? Which I mean, when we listened to animals last time, we didn't even talk about the the photo shoot where the pig uh, broke its moorings and drifted off and caused mm. all kinds of havoc for uh, air traffic control. Mm -hmm. 
But I just feel like that's probably a story that's been told. Oh, look lot. here. We got some band photos. Yeah, look at that. They're all younger. Well, that you know, I think I mentioned to you that Roger Water flies the um, pig around. Why is he playing a Fender Strat? He's, it's it's the black strap, bro. Look he's at, playing a pa- he's playing a power chord. <laughs> maybe it's a bar chord. It, it looks uh, like maybe an F F sharp. Colby calls uh, uh, F sharp minor. Or could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have could have been a bar. Um, David uh, Colby calls him Fish Face. Yeah, because of, of these faces right here. Yeah, these these are cool. Oh, okay. Got some cool. Um, was this a concert? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like concert memorabilia. Hand bill. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we got a ticket here, seventy cent from around this era. Some artwork. Right. Yeah, uh, the fat man. They fly that 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 around too. Oh, cool. Uh, but it's Donald Trump mm. at the Roger Waters concerts. But, yeah, it's just so interesting how, like, when I saw him, he quite literally did repackage this Mm -hmm. to be, like, anti-Donald Trump. Yeah. Like, this whole, um, well, in a lot of, but it was mostly the Animals album. Yeah. Like, because I told you, like, he played essentially the whole album live. Yeah. So, um, not a ton of noticeable difference yet, but we're still just early. This is the second song. See, to me, we're on dogs. I mean, like, uh, I mean, I guess in a way, it's like this. Of course, isn't the first time I've heard this. I've listened to it a lot in the car. Yeah, you and know, it is yeah. notable on. Uh, I think once you get into dogs here in just a second, like once it yeah gets out of this but, first but verse. To me, even from the first track, "Pigs on the Wing" part one. There's a certain degree of clarity to it. It's like Roger's voice is much higher in the mix. And this, I feel like there's more separation. I feel like David's vocals are more. And then here we are referring to my first name. That's big. Yeah, again, get, get, you know? get you. that's yeah. how we do things. Yeah. But guitar solos. Mm-hmm. To me, one thing I've noticed about the remix, too, especially with the guitar solos, is yeah, they're pushed to the front. But to me, I can really notice a lot of the effects that David Gilmore uses. Like, man, mm-hmm. he really plays a lot, or he uses a lot of uh, the electro harmonics, electric mistress, the flanger. You hear that on top of a lot of this stuff. Well, and since we did the last um, episode, uh, I text you that, uh, like, a quote from David Gilmore. It might have been a meme. But saying that he could kind of like basically go pick up any strat, yeah, a couple yeah. of pedals, because it's there's there's really nothing that makes his sound other than him. Yeah, the like that I said the tones, the tones are in the fingers. That is what you tones said. Tones yeah. with a Z or T O A N Z tones. We're and we're always talking about the quest for you know the right and perfect tone yeah but maybe that's just more practice <laughs> sad, sad to say you know I, I would say there used to be a guy i jammed with a lot who's a bass player and he played um a lot of a lot of times he would play a fretless bass yeah and he was always talking about dude this sounds great yeah yeah sorry to interrupt that, no, 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 that, no, that notable a, difference here this yeah, is one one of the very spots. clear like listen to that bro you know, I realized like the last two, like like this, I'm being a lot more casual with the way I talk. Like the last one, I felt like this is this is NPR. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. But this is exciting to me. This is like this sounds really good. So that sounds notably different because nice. That's the that's the part, dude. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've listened to this song probably more than any other, um, more than any other Pink Floyd song. Really? Yeah. It's my favorite song. Well, I, I know. You told me that last time. Um, yeah, it's good. It's really good. Um, I'm looking at metal now. What is the track listing on metal? Do you remember? Uh, one of These Days. Uh, Which is a great Pillow, song. Pillow Winds. Uh, Fearless. Mm-hmm. Oh, which is a great song. Yeah. Um, what 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 do we get after that? I know I know we we get a Seamus at some point in Echoes. May, maybe that's Seamus is on side it. one. Then it goes Echoes. Yeah, that's yeah. Because Echoes is the is a side long. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like twenty three 
Uh, approximately uh, San Tropez. Oh yeah, or San Tropez. San Tropez. I think, yeah. I think, or I don't know how it's actually pronounced. I think that's how Roger says it in the song now. You know, San Tropez. It's got just Roger's name in parentheses. <laughs> Does that mean that the band just didn't want to claim credit you know, for all it? the like, other this stuff? This is embarrassing. Your, has your, all their names. Your your pseudo jazz song is embarrassing. We <laughs> should put this on your solo album. It's a good song. You. It's a good yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like some people, you know, consider things like Final Cut, a, so, a Roger Water solo record. I've so, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, I, th- I I I love the guitar solos on it. Though, That's so. what Colby says. Yeah. Dude, Colby just raves about like I'm. I I would. I'd be down to do that one next. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Final. We were just talking about that before we started sounds recording. Sounds great. Um, because that's really that's going to be the bookend. Yeah. Because here's the thing: if we go in order, then we'll get stuck listening to all the post Roger Waters. Oh albums. man! But I want to listen to a momentary lapse. I mean, we reason. will. That one is is I, I, I and I mean like I actually have an appreciation for that record in a way, but there are parts of it that are pretty laughable. Sorry, David. Yeah. <laughs> well, and two, I think, I think a lot of this also, um, what year did that album come out? Am I 83? Am I making that up? Uh, which one? Um, Final Cut? The first Gilmore album. Oh, of like, or like the first. Which is, my, uh, is that a momentary lapse of reason or is that the last Gilmore album? Well, well, I mean like, are we, we're, we're, we're still talking about Pink Floyd, right? Correct, but post post Roger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, post Roger Pink Floyd was a momentary lapse of reason, and that was in '87. Oh wow, later than yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what came Annabelle, out in '83? Uh, that was a Final Cut. Oh, okay. Final that's Cut came what out I'm in, doing. came okay. out in '83, and uh, 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 almost comically, you can say that that uh, David Gilmore had a solo record in maybe '84. That was called About Face, and it kind of flopped. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, "Well, I'll just get the Pink Floyd name back to sell some records," <laughs> which he did. Yeah, which he did. He sold a lot. I mean, look at that. That's just, look at that worldwide. Yeah, wow, oh, ten million. Yeah, that's insane. Actually, look up and see what Animals did here. Mm, oh, stats. twelve! Holy twelve million. Holy, that's because that dogs. Crazy. It's because of the solo. Yeah, of dogs, absolutely. Bro. But just think, man, people buying, you know, the, these albums that only, yeah, that have these incredibly long songs on them. Well, you know, definitely the peak of album, like, like, album I, rock. I wonder what the, um, really, another thing that is re- relevant, let me see if I can look this up on my phone. Let's see how many listens. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll just say this song, because we're listening to it, that um, uh, Dogs has... Because like uh, yeah. around the time of the Super Bowl, like a whole bunch of like the Dr. Dre songs and Tupac it reached yeah. a billion digital listens. Oh, man, that's so that's worth like noting, I think. Um, that's so, interesting. So if if you're if you're able to look up dogs, how many millions of those listens are going to be you, Brian? At least you know a hundred thousand or something. <laughs> I mean, I really have listened to it a lot. Oh, dude, love this part. Love this part of this song. And this sounds different to me. This part, this part of the song sounds different. Listen to the clarity, Brian. Do you hear it? I do. Because I would say on the original, to me, this sounds more like, and I was thinking about how to describe it, because it's like that synthesizer thing, and you got uh, the echoing, you got the dogs barking through the uh, vocorder in there. But it's like it sounds more like a soup to me on that original record. And to this, it's very dimensional it's mm-hmm. very crystal clear the other one felt like okay maybe they're like drowning or whatever okay but this is very i feel there's a lot of separation between the instruments here it does not say the stats for it only says stats mm. for the top five songs okay well let's read those off while we're at it um but yeah i was like come on now uh so wish you were here is the top song at um Five hundred and twenty-four million. Wow. Okay, actually, no, that's not the most. They're not in order. Okay. Another brick in the wall. Part two is well, six hundred and thirty-five yeah. million. Yeah. Comfortably, nine is four hundred forty-one point seven million. Mm-hmm. Um, money. Surprisingly, that's not one of my favorite songs. Um, is three three hundred and eighty million. You, you, you don't dig the seven by four time. You don't. 
I mean, that part's kind of cool. But yeah. uh, the time, the, I don't it's know. A, it's just. Dun, it's a pop. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I don't know. It's just uh, really, to be perfectly honest, it's uh, it's the vocals and the lyrics. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's got a good saxophone solo. I like this. I like the instruments. Like I yeah. like the bass line. I like the. I like the guitar, like everything, but it's just like the money. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what year did uh, Dark Side come out? 73. 73, okay. Hey, you, you don't need Wikipedia. You uh, have Wikipedia. Yeah, I know, I, dude, that's why I, you always <laughs> impress me, bro. Like there's, I can't tell you the month or the day, but yeah, it was 1973. I was so there. Ti- oh, time was also in, is another in. one uh, from that same album. That's the last one at 260 million. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to so. listen to Dark Side, of course, since that's like the ultimate album record or whatever. But yeah, I mean, uh, maybe we could do uh, one day, like uh, I think we we should do like maybe Dark Side and Wish You Were Here mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. We Actually, could do that, that next. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah. I mean, right. I don't think I was looking. I was thinking I had Dark Side, but then I was thinking maybe I didn't, and it's mm-hmm. I couldn't find it over there, so I probably don't. But um, those are definitely, like, those are two of the other ones I was going to get. I'm not, like, purchasing the vinyls in order, necessarily. Mm -hmm. While I snatched this one, I went ahead and got metal just because... Well, it's metal. It's it's a great great album. Not to give anything away, but, yeah, it's it's a very, very good record. Yeah, Yeah. and I would be down to um, to do metal next as well. Yeah. This sounds... Here's where we come back in with the... Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was really impressed by this remix, though. Yeah, and I, uh, I was. It's it, so it, funny, though. It does say in parentheses and it says on the album 2018 remix. Yeah, it says on Spotify. Yeah, but it was just released just, uh, I want to say, sometime in September because there was a dispute between Roger and oh, David. Roger. Well, I think Roger initially wanted to remix the album back 2018 or whatever and i think both gilmore and nick mason both kind of objected to it they didn't want to do it Mm. Uh, why roger wanted to remix it i i'm not exactly sure i've got my ideas (laughs) i think i mean i think it's go ahead throw them out there i'm because like i would love to hear everything i just see is just like roger waters wanted to do it but i've never seen an exact explanation for why i mean like you're right i have my own theory as well on it but it's it but what what's yours that's what i want to know uh okay so i think that he once gilmore got the pink floyd name back roger was also still I mean, still active, still playing music, right. and then but David Gilmore for years is playing Pink Floyd songs. Right. It's only now. So I think the, the last time David Gilmore played live was like 2016. Was that was that when that Pompeii concert was? Yeah. So yeah, I think so. I think you're right. And you know, every I saw Roger Waters for the first time in 2017, and I saw him again in 2018 twice. I think it was. Um, or vice versa, like twice in 2017. But mm-hmm. um, he doesn't have competition from Gilmore. Yeah. Right? So he can, like, get the max cash cash in right now is how I feel. I kind of feel like um, David Gilmore's not trying to cash in on Pink Floyd's name anymore. You know, like, but Roger is. And he's yeah. made comments, like, in one of the documentaries. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, David's playing across the street and... To you know thousands, and I'm playing to three thousand people. In this, yeah, you know, and there's empty seats and stuff. But that, I mean, I, he's also like I. I want to say I looked up the other day, and I think that he has the highest net worth of uh, any the of members, the living members. Yeah, so let's look that up. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know what exactly Waters' reason was, but yeah, I mean, it got done in in 2018. But 310 million for Roger. But it it didn't get released until um, oh, that's in pounds, bro. But so it's around that. It's around that. Yeah, uh, but um, but look, the richest member of Pink Floyd. That's yeah. what I looked up the other day. That's living is is Roger, and yeah. I think it's because of like I mean, dude, even at 70. 
eight years old, I uh, I believe is is his yeah. age. Yeah. How much touring he is doing? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's out there, man. He really is. Right. He's 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 uh, he's kind of um, since that time, like since David's last concert, he has just yeah. been. But then, actually, since the pandemic, this is like his tour coming back after right. the pandemic. So right, he didn't do anything in the pandemic. Yeah. So the remix was done in 2018, but it didn't come out until 2022 because, um, I mean, I guess I guess Gilmore and Mason said, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead do the remix, but they they had. Uh, problems apparently with the liner notes or, or somebody had written some liner notes and maybe I, I think it was David Gilmore didn't like something that was in there or that's what Roger Waters alluded to so that's what held everything up for like four years I say liner notes I mean I guess they didn't get published I think I think Waters actually published them online or something like that mm. so that people could be like oh this is what this is what David didn't want you to see. You know, uh, like that. Yeah, like, I wonder if he made money off that. He probably did. In some uh, way or another. Yeah. See, that's like what, when I, what I was saying. Like, he had the sickest shirt for sale. And I want, uh, it might even have been a Pink Floyd shirt, but I've been making this up. But it was this tie-dye shirt. And it's like sick. It, but it was like 75, oh 80 bucks. Gosh. And I was that's... just like, damn, bro. Like, I, I pay 50 for that T-shirt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But like, I really, but... I've never paid fifty dollars for a concert T-shirt. I think yeah. that's kind of out of control. Yeah, it's a T-shirt. <laughs> like both these shirts are wearing together didn't cost fifty bucks. No, not at all. This, yeah, no, no, not at all. This sounds good. Yeah, everything's a lot clearer. That's what I, I agree. Yeah, everything's a lot clearer. the The original to me always sounded a bit flat. Is my that's the way my dad would put. It. My dad's an audiophile, right? <laughs> and in like different pressings of records or whatnot, he'd be like, "Yeah, it sounds a little flat, meaning it's just a bit." Oh, hey, let me show you. Like this. it doesn't jump, but this this really pops. Like this really pops out, like and it's good. And I mean, I have a theory on like yeah, the remix and why it's done and why this, it's done the way it's done. This and, vinyl puck before it's pressed. Oh, that's pretty amazing. Of, uh, actually, yeah. uh, well, that's Steve Miller being yeah. right there. Yeah, I see that. Brand it up a little bit. Yeah, but it's uh, like a vinyl puck is super small, like palm size. This person's holding it in the palm of their hand. Um, and then it's pressed. Right. It's, you know, record says, oh, right. that's that's it. That's, that's it for one. side one. Uh, Brian, what are your initial impressions, especially since you're such a big fan of dogs? Uh, um, yeah, what, what, what did you think? A lot of, um, a lot of things in the background. Mm-hmm. are much more clear. It's not just the overall... Oops. Yeah, it's all right. It just it needs to be re reset. You're good. It's, uh, it's not just the overall like clarity of the instruments. Mm-hmm. It's stuff like that, too. Yeah. That's what I noticed. There's just things like the, the siren in the background. Uh, just things the overall are much more clear. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's... Um, the keyboard and the synths coming through, uh, yeah. The sound effects like, like the pig oinking yeah. here. Like honestly, that's more clear as well. See, I'm gonna. This is gonna be a bold statement, okay? On the initial original album, I would say yeah, the best song is Dogs, right? On on the the original mix. But this is one of my favorite songs. But man, on the remix, this song kills, man. Okay, the great. bass okay, on it bit. is awesome. And I think that's played by David Gilmour. I think that's what I mentioned before, which is funny, right? It's like, it's like the 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 bass is so good. I'm gonna this. I'm gonna go ahead and snag uh, these uh, next two vinyls uh, while we're sitting. Okay, that way they're right. at least that's, on their that's, way. That's, that's fine. Since shipping was a little, you know what Amazon keeps doing is they keep like without me asking, consolidating. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. They keep consolidating my orders with other See, orders I, I, without I, me asking. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that's what delayed this. It came in with some other stuff that Cord ordered, and that happened a while back, too. Oh, yeah, that sounds way better. Yeah, dude. The bass is just off the hook, man. Like, David's, like, doing some, like, pseudo, like, bass slap stuff on here too slap, slap into bs yeah <laughs> super good uh okay 
Uh, wish you were here. Vinyl. The vocals mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Vocals are like much clearer here. Like it's almost like he's in the room with us, Brian. <laughs> Tiny desk. <laughs> Tiny table. <laughs> Oh, that does sound great, man. Yeah, it does. That's what I'm saying, man. Like this song, like when he hit the high note, there rules. And and, it, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's, do we want the remastered the version of "Wish You Were Here" though? The remastered version? Yeah, um, stereo remastered album on heavyweight, hundred and eighty grain vinyl. Well, yeah, I think. Shine on you, crazy diamond. Welcome to the machine. Have a cigar. One of my favorites. Now, okay. Now, one thing is with this is I've heard pe I've heard some criticism about this mix. Uh, I mean, of this specific song. Really, I heard somebody criticize the fact that the cowbell or whatnot wasn't as high in the mix as the original. But you know what I say, hmm. Brian? The name of the song is "Pigs, Not Cows." It's true. But it still true. is really that is a that was a good joke. I know that was that was so. Dude, lame. sometimes. Um, I will like sorry, no, I will make funny jokes in the morning fitness kickboxing class, which is mostly like ladies, you know, closer to my age, yeah, than anything. And then you know, some of them even you know, ten years older than me, or more. But man, sometimes I throw one out there and no one laughs, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> they just don't hit, you know. Yeah. But that was a funny joke. It's like here it is. Yeah. See. This cowbell right over yeah. there, dude. I'm looking at it. <laughs> okay. We got Wish You Were Here. Yeah, this sounds great. This, this sounds really good. Like I said, when, uh, Richard Wright backing vocals again. <laughs> I'll say this sounds better on vinyl than it actually does in my car stereo. So, Yeah, listen to that. That was probably David Gilmore, too. And he's probably playing the cowbell. He's because well, he's the backbone of the band, yeah. you know. I yeah. mean, not to be controversial, but you know, it is what it is, people. You know, I just like that's the kind of the argument though is like the sound of Pink Floyd. It, oh man, I just feel like you could take Roger Waters out of it, but then you wouldn't have the creative influence, right? Right. Well, but I mean, like, man, David sings so much. Mm -hmm. It plays multi instruments, but like, man, his he stands. At least I said this in the last episode. It's like he's he's just a giant, and it, it, well, the greatest, one of the greatest living yeah. guitar players. Um, he's uh, going to be a historical figure. He is yeah. already in his own time. That's way more clear too. Uh, and what an incredible yeah. career too. I mean, enough so like I mean, think about this. Like enough so that like you and I uh want to come together and just like, oh, let's take the time out of our lives and listen to all right. of this stuff yeah. in this one format that it was originally recorded in. And, and it's it's Sounds Roger's stuff too. Great. Listen listen to those keyboards, man. The synthesizer. Yeah, that's a talk box. Is it David doing that? Yep. Imagine that. Wow. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Adam Jones from Tool, he uses yeah. the talk, docs, uh, talk box a little bit. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I would like to have one. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're pretty niche, though. It's like, they only have, like, specific applications where, you know, that makes sense or whatever. Not to say that you can't be experimental or try different things, but you, you do get pigeonholed really quick and uh, what you can do or... I really Tasteful like um, what you can do. Or is it have a cigar where you get sucked into the stereo? At oh the yeah, end? man, so good. Yeah. So is it what it goes animals and then uh, uh, dark side and then wish you were here seventy three and seventy five? Is that how it goes? Oh well, no. I mean, what's the what is the order of the, after animals? Animals is the wall. Next. Okay. Whoa. Wow. Okay. I was I was backwards on that. It's yeah. Dark yeah. side. Wish you were here. Then animals. I was way right. backwards on that. Yeah. Animals is in seventy seven, and the wall is seventy nine. So. Okay. Which is pretty incredible to think that they were making these records uh, approximately within two years of each other. You mm -hmm. know. I mean, it's 
it's kind of like how the oh, that was a cool bass run there but um the beatles were like kicking out it sometimes like two albums a year you know i mean that's that's pretty incredible to think about man how sad that like look at that run of albums like you got dark side wish you were here animals the wall like those four albums or yeah. four of the greatest Classics, albums of yeah. all time, you know? I mean, to be honest, and yeah, all of music. Critically acclaimed, yeah, records, right? Uh, let's look at the sales on them. Because um, two of the two of them that we looked at the digital uh, on just on Spotify were on uh, Dark Side. Uh, we got 30 oh, million crazy. worldwide. Crazy. Well, see, I don't know with The Wall if, if, they're, if it's actually... If they're counting it, because it's a double album. I don't know if they're counting like twice. So it's actually 15 million mm. copies, but it, good. they're two records. So it's actually 30. Could be. So I don't know if that's what they're. Tw 12 million for Animals. said that earlier, but uh, we sure here's 20. 20 look at um, Dark Side, though, bro. 45. Yeah. Isn't that insane? That. That That's is wild. nuts, man. And it said the wall was thirty. So yeah, Dark Side's uh, I guess probably the number one selling. Yeah. Oh, it's so iconic, million, man. Seven million, two point five million. You see this day for this this declined. Yeah. Well, you know. What year did the Endless River come that out? That was two twenty fourteen. And that's just uh It's like a bunch of just leftovers from uh the division okay, cell. Okay. That's what it's it's instrumental mainly. I think there's only one song with vocals on it. Keyboard sounds and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of like a tribute to Richard Wright. Oh, oh man, the before. bass, dude. I, I heard that, bro. He slapped it. Yeah, this is this song is so impressive to me now. I'm like, this this is easily and I'm not I'm not digging on sheep either because that's a great song too, but man, this just kills, man. Do, and also, let's just remark, um, and people can go back and listen to the Ben Ben Aiken podcast. But listening to music is good for your mental health. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. And people should. I know. Okay, so here's what I think: yeah. songs that saved your life, man. You know. Well, I think this. I think it's more special doing it like. Um, I almost think. You don't benefit from it as much. Like it's a great distraction to throw on the headphones, uh, your AirPods, and clean the house or or do you know landscaping or whatever, work. Yeah. But you, it's like I don't think you get the same benefit. Like exercise, for example, um, which I'm a huge proponent of. But some people are like, oh, well, I got this really strenuous job, so that's exercise. But doctors will say, like, no, it's not. Like, yeah. or you wouldn't be suffering from these, you know, this, you know, things that you're afflicted by because you don't exercise. Yeah. Uh, but I think that listening to music is the same. I think that it has a therapeutic value doing it in the right setting. Like, you know, okay, it's the end of the day. You're you're sitting at your house and you're the place you want to be and you throw on one of your favorite albums and you just kick your feet back and you enjoy it. Right. I also really like listening to it while exercising, right? Which I know a lot of people do that, but yeah, uh, mainly riding my bike. Yeah, uh, I really do enjoy um, like doing a whole album on a bike ride. And then too, like Cora does like Peloton. Mm -hmm. Which is like an instructor led, like on a TV screen on a stationary bike, but yeah. it's like set to music. But huge therapeutic value. Yeah, absolutely, completely agree. Or but like, and it's it's I you know I don't know if like for example um, I don't know, dude I just really hate driving in a car, not like to the gym like that's fine, but like man I've just driven so much all over the country. For example, to Orlando from Arkansas mm -hmm. uh, three times, to California and back once, to Vegas and back three times, countless trips to Dallas, uh, a couple of trips to yeah. Houston. Dude, it just goes on, like all of the regional big cities. And uh, so, like, I don't know, even like listening to music on trips is not the same for me. Yeah. You know, until you're sometimes on a trip with like other people. And they might not want to listen to the same music. Yeah, you. yeah. 
I do like I like audio books for driving. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite. That sounds way better. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really crisp. It sounds great in the headphones. It's like how it's bouncing back and yeah. forth. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I mean, I know we're talking about oh, this sounds great. This sounds you know, uh, but I mean, the original album does sound really good, and I mean, the original mix. I think we should start calling but, Richard Wright Rick. Rick, Rick Wright, Rick Wright, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what some people say, and I, and we're already on the first name basis. With yeah, David right. So, yeah, we'll just still call Nate Mason Nate Mason. Yeah, first name, abs- abs- absolutely. Why like Joe Rogan? Yeah, it's and Joe, Joe Rogan. Yeah, it's just almost, It's practically a trademark. It's yeah, you have to. But uh, like. Yeah, I, I feel like we're talking like, oh man, this this sounds so much better. Sound. But it's it's like the the original, uh, the content and everything is so good on the original. But it's it is. Just, it's, it's just like the the original mix is just it's different. It's darker. It's it's a bit more murky sounding. Actually, it's a lot more murky sounding in comparison to this. And my theory for it is is I think the way that the remix was approached is one thing that to note about animals is that it was actually recorded at another recording studio that they had specifically built called Britannia Row. Before that, they had recorded all their albums at Abbey Road, mm-hmm. which was state-of-the-art, you know, like, like Abbey Road is famous, right? I mean, yeah. it's one of the most famous recording studios there is. And uh, they specifically built this other studio, Britannia Row, to um, record their stuff in. And my thought was, is that well, is that Abbey Road had the better equipment and everything like that, right? So by going back and doing the remix, I think in a way they're trying to clean it up to make it sound more linear with like Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, sonically. So because Animals is quite a departure sound-wise from the earlier, more... Uh, yeah, see, this is the, the earlier records. These are also the benefits. Well, you knew we'll have this because, man, a lot of the albums, like from where we just left off with, like the Barrett era, yeah, through like the four albums we just talked about. Yeah, like, that's that. That's the meat and potatoes. Yeah, of my yeah, opinion. Yeah. that's my working man's Floyd. Yeah, right. You know, but um, you because your dad was an audiophile and mine, you know. <laughs> Didn't want me listening. Makes to it sec- sound like he's a scientist. Secular or music, yeah. dude. My parents were like Jesus music only. Yeah, you know, for a while, I I revolted against that super hard, <laughs> starting as in about eighth grade. But um, yeah, you'll know you have the contextual uh, commentary on that, yeah. right? Like, whereas I was just like I was out. Of, but in two, that's a great point. Like. This does sound earlier or, yeah, or than Dark Side and um, well, well, no, Wish You Were Here, well, and that's why, in my mind, to be honest, like I, well, it would like it would go in that order. Well, I, what what I'm saying is though is that it's actually closer to Dark Side and Wish You Were Here. Sonically, it's closer mm-hmm. to that. It sounds like it's possibly from that same fabric. Yeah, it's sure, it's darker. It's you know the themes and everything are are a bit more heavy. Mm-hmm. Like the music is heavier, but. Sonically, it feels more like it's part of that block of just those oh, classic yeah, records, right? That's that's what I feel feel like they, because like you have people refer to Animals as this is Pink Floyd's punk album, you know, and part of that is because well maybe it doesn't sound as pristine as those other mm-hmm. records do, you know. This to me sounds like it's getting closer to that sonic perfection, Nirvana, mm-hmm. you know, that sort of thing. So I think that might have been how this remix was approached by the engineers when they went back and, oh, here are the master tapes. You know, let's see what we can do with our uh, 21st century technology to try to make this a bit more uh, I wonder what part it... of that legacy. Which is, I mean, it's kind of a shame because Animals is, is a great album. Even in its original mix, it's a great album. You know what would be cool to... Um have the dude that remixed this on the podcast oh wow and James Guthrie he's worked on a a lot of Floyd stuff over the years contact him (laughs) okay he's got his own Wikipedia page yeah 
Uh, okay, he did an interview with these people. And who were they? <laughs> uh, yeah, he has done a lot of stuff. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's worked on a lot of the remasters over the years. He is 68 years old. Yeah. Been active as a producer since 73. So he would have been like 20 40s, years old, yeah. man. Mid 70s. He been in his 20s. Like his mid 20s, huh? So. He would have been younger than most of the band. Mm. If not all the band. That's pretty incredible. Dude, you know what's weird? It's like I met somebody the other day. Um, that's been a few weeks ago, but they were super successful. And I was like, damn, you know, you're like super young. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no. Because I still see myself as super young, but they were 37 years old. <laughs> and I was like, man, how are you so young and so successful? Yeah. Kind of. And then I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. We're not young, bro. You've had like 17 yeah. years to put it all together, you know? But like, but uh, I, I don't just like, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, it makes more sense. You're 37, bro. Yeah. You're, you're like almost 40 years old. You're 37, I feel like. I don't know. What is that? the psalm portion it's so creepy man even though you have the art of karate stuff and all and it's just absolutely absurd but he releases my soul with knives he maketh me to hang from hooks in high places it's like roger what? <laughs> roger do you need a hug bro <laughs> like like are you gonna be okay <laughs> i will say like uh, you know Listening to that podcast that he was on, I'm even more interested in the guy now. Yeah. Because just that podcast is more it's more time damn near than all of what I've seen from him mm -hmm. in interviews. Yeah. Like on the documentaries and, and then like that recent CNN interview he was on. Nice base work again. Maybe I should um stash all of these uh, into I could put it on YouTube but I couldn't do it on uh, Facebook yeah but, uh, stash all of these episodes because now I'm archiving everything in the cloud mm. um, and then maybe edit into like a big uh, 16 hour <laughs> podcast when we get done like edit all the episodes together oh my gosh yeah that would be great That'd be cool. Yeah, nobody would watch that. They probably wouldn't. No. Nobody would sit through that. Or it'd be a complete accident if they did. People would Whoops, click, people would click on it. It would get like eight views. <laughs> Dude, it, it, it's just crazy how, um, I guess the algorithms work. Cause yeah. Like some of the videos that I have, they're like my top viewed videos on like the gym page, for example. It's just like, why are you guys? Why are y'all the top five? Hmm. It's just interesting how they hit. I love this part. Yeah, the the outro bit. Um. Oh man, I was playing. Uh, I had a guitar lesson on Friday, and learned um, some new chords. Yeah. Major sevens. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah, those are good. Yeah. Like those, dude. It's like that shape. <laughs> yeah. Turkey claw. <laughs> um, but they, they they are a wild shape. Uh, it is like um, yeah, I, I love using them with the pinky. You know, like mm -hmm. on the first. Yep. Uh, dude, I suck at it too. Because I told Paul, I was like, "Hey, bro, I was watching Widespread Painted play live, and I was like, Jimmy was playing like it looked like a bar chord, but he was using his pinky." I was like, "Bro, I've seen people play bar chords this way. I've seen him play them this way, mm -hmm. even this way with these two fingers." But I was like, "I never seen anybody play a bar chord like that." Really? And wow. and then he's just like, or a power chord rather, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I understood. And he was like. Uh, it's probably major seven. And I was just like, what do you mean? And he showed me, I was like, bro, that was definitely the chord that he was playing that I kept seeing in this one, whatever song he was playing. And, um, but so like G major seven and I guess a major seven were the two that I was playing around with. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, is that it? No, we got, one we got one more. more. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is a short one. Yeah. The book ends. Yeah. Pig, yes. Pigs on the wing. And then that's when it's not there. It's like, that's the part Roger removed. So it's all just totally dark. There's no, like, 
kind of optimistic ending to it. I could I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, this sounds fine. See, Roger's voice is like really up front. In it, yeah, it does. It sounds notably different on the vocals, it, particularly with his voice. I think um, more so than Gilmore's, perhaps. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, Gilmore only what sings one song on this, "Dogs," and I mean Roger even shows up at the end of that. So true. Um, but okay, so I mean, what are your thoughts on this, especially in comparison with the original? Interesting update, interesting story about why it's 2022 and it just came out. Yeah, it's, um, it's that same old uh, argument, right? Roger Waters versus David Gilmore. It's like... I mean, even if you take, like, let's say that, like, that guy wasn't working for 18 months because of the pandemic yeah. or whatever. Even if you take that into account, um, it's still too long. <laughs> That's... Uh, yeah, you know, it's still like a unreasonable amount of time, because um, you know, if it says twenty eighteen on the cover, they probably worked on it actually for probably a couple years before yeah, that. Yeah, right. Is right. what I would for think. Real. Yeah, they probably started. What, on and I wonder while, really um, what all goes. Why it would be interesting to interview this guy or someone like him mm-hmm. is to see what all goes in to that process. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, but um, I, I, um, I, it's an interesting update. Now, do you think we should do this with every uh, every album? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's that's cool. Like, um, re, like I mean, like remix. Um, yeah. Well, okay. Now, see, this is this is where I think last time I kind of talked like we we get into arguments or not. I mean, we're not going to argue. We're not going to argue. But yeah, philosophically, so like, is is a remix essentially revisionism? Is, is it, revisionism a negative thing? Yeah, right. See, that's what that's I'm saying. That's really the yeah, debate. Yeah, is it, is it really, like, like, is this necessary? No, it's not necessary. They didn't have to go back and remix it. But am I glad they did? Yes. Did we give Roger some more of our money? Yes. Yes. And time. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, I'm going to probably give him even more time because I'm going to be like, oh, Joe Rogan. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go watch it's this. It's worth so. it. It's worth it. Because I will say... um, Man, uh, Joe is a good interviewer, yeah. and he asked really interesting questions. And that's one thing I was, like, thankful that that was the dude interviewing him and not, like, some CNN news anchor, mm-hmm. whoever that guy was. I forget his name um, because they talk about him on the episode. But uh, just, like, the questions he was asking were thoughtful, and it just led to – until at one point they kind of got off track on this other topic – and then he was like, oh, hey, go ahead and read your Vita Ray Putin letter, you know? And he's yeah. like, oh, okay, here we go. And then Roger's like reading poems and stuff, yeah. too. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is, um, I'm just, here's what I'm happy about. All things aside, all arguments aside, I'm happy that we have content that is new mm-hmm. and still coming out. And, and it will probably still have that after these guys pass away. You know, there'll probably be like some like, uh, oh, we'll sell this to them or whatever, and we'll get, be able to get another vinyl that you know, some unreleased live performance from the from the height of the band, you know, right? Something, but it, it's not, you know, these the the main two guys that we really, um, I would say, probably talk about the most, David and Roger. They're still alive, and yeah. I don't know. I I just like I wonder what that's going to be like. Uh, like how much longer it'll just be different when stuff comes out when that's not the case yeah so stuff's still coming out like whether who knows dude what if we're getting paparazzi or something and like all of this roger waters story and the thing what if that's all just like so we talk about it and do a podcast about it like it's a conspiracy yeah, yeah. they playing this yeah paranoia paranoia yeah, yeah. Uh, being being paranoid about stuff but anyway but yeah, ba- back to the the revisionism. Is it good or whatnot? Did you know that maybe only about oh, I'd say it was in 2019, right before pandemic, there was actually a remix released of a momentary lapse of reason. No, do I you didn't. think that's a coincidence that we had animals, Roger, right, dominated record, and then it's like Gilmore wants to make his own version of one of his own records. Well, what's interesting too is like if you look at the set list 
mm-hmm. of like what Rogers on tour with and like what David played at Pompeii. Yeah. Very, very similar. Yeah. But like with like two or three song, like key song yeah. differences. Yeah. Like a couple that Roger plays that David doesn't yeah. touch on and vice versa. But it's like, it's like, the, okay, it's like, like this project or whatever, I feel like they just went back to what they had. You know, but this is what was recorded in 77 and this is what we're dealing with. Now with the remix of A Momentary Lapse of Reason, Nick Mason went back and recorded all of his drum tracks new. Good job, Nick. Yeah, which I mean because I I guess the reason is because he didn't play on all the songs on there. So in order to make it more like a band, but still, I mean, like, like, Mm. like, how do you feel about that? I mean, like, like 30, 30 years later, right? Guy goes back and records that's all that's major his revision, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but at least it was him. Yeah. If it was anybody other than him, they they stripped back all the '80s, a lot of the '80s production and stuff. And believe it or not, I actually like the original mix better. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I think it's because it's well, and when we get to that, when we get to that, at yeah. that point, we'll line it up so we can listen to both of them at the same time. Yeah. You know, we can do some of those. Uh, do like a Sunday episode, or I mean, this this time's fine too. You can see, a, like Cora, she talks on a um, PA now, mm-hmm. so she doesn't ruin her voice. Because, like, she, t- like, we both teach so much, but she teaches more kids. She has to project. Yeah. So she gets on a mic. So it gets to be about this point of the afternoon. It, it'll bleed over into the yeah. mics just yeah. a little bit, but not terribly. By the time I edit it, um, it's not bad. Yeah. Okay. So another question with animals right before we wrap up everything here. Um, you said that Animals is your favorite Pink Floyd album. Uh, yes, I would and have said are you going to revisit or are, 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 which which version will you listen to from now on? Mm. Are, 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 are you are you going to go with the original? Or are you going to go with the remix? That's a tough one, dude. Well, I mean, I will say this. If I'm listening in the studio, I will probably listen to the original on vinyl. Mm-hmm. I may also take like one of these to my house because I probably... Well, both of them being here at the studio, so I've got, uh, Corey and I have a little record collection I mentioned last time going at the house. Right. Um, but if I'm digitally, I will probably listen to the new one, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but if I do end up taking the remix home, which is probably what I'm going to do, um, I listen to records way more often. Like here at the studio, I'll come in the morning, I'll be working. So I would say it just kind of depends on the platform. But if, if we're vinyl, I'm more likely probably going to be listening to the original here in the studio. Yeah. And and also, um, does the does the remix give you a greater appreciation for the content of the original album? Uh, I mean, yeah, it does, for sure. Um, I got the main thing that I, I mentioned earlier that I enjoy is um, oh, just like even like not just the instruments, but just how much everything the the sounds overall background noise, mm-hmm. uh, synths, uh, ambiance. Yeah, you know, all of that is so much more enhanced and clear, and like what you said, I think you used the term uh, like muddy or murky. Um, like all of that has been cleaned up a little bit. I wonder if they just threw it in and they just hit like the autocorrect button and <laughs> and like it sounded better because I do that. Yeah. Uh, that's editing they, for me. Dude, yeah. they just Pro Tools did. That's what they did. They just they yeah. just just put some. Yeah, but remove background noise or whatever. On it. Yeah, yeah. It's, no. it's just a direct final rip. That's all it is. It's, they didn't even go back to the master tapes. They well, just... see, that's you know, I want. <laughs> I really am interested to know, uh, and I'm going to do a little research on this uh, about what all goes into the remix process on something like mm-hmm. this because that is um, something I would want to know more about. Just like, uh, I mean, you know, is it hundreds of hours of yeah. uh, uh, you know? them setting down and back and forth with the band and that's the sort of story that you know i kind of wish they would have put out with it that uh, could enhance the the value of it and maybe the, you know that's like kind of was joking about the conspiracy of roger waters like yeah. uh, that whole story like maybe that is why um we have that little little piece to talk about right yeah i uh yeah roger waters what a yeah what a capitalist right i mean <laughs> yeah but did, yeah. did you know that the cover of metal is a human ear? Underwater? I thought it was a nose. <laughs> it looks like a nose yeah, hole. Yeah, I, I can see it, but it's actually an ear. Yeah. Underwater. That's wild. No, I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
Sick album cover. <laughs> well, so uh, I got I've got those others uh, ordered. So we'll Sweet. be back next time f- when we continue with the Floyd series on Dark Side. And wish you were here. I do like this new album cover, but um, I do think also a lot of people like, oh, why didn't you just update the original? See, you know? okay, okay, this this is where it's going to be a bit like, man, I like the remix better than I do the original mix, but I I love the original cover, dude. Mm-hmm. Pink's like, face in a different way, sacrilege, like, dude. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I really I really dig that that original cover, but I mean, this is fine. This is okay. I I get what they're uh, what they're getting at. You know, it's four years later. There's all kinds of deconstruction and reconstruction and still more work or left repurposing to do. yeah you know yeah. right but man that original cover is great uh I, it's it's actually um i i've over uh over the past couple, couple of years maybe ever since i started buying like band tees or whatever i've only had three pink floyd shirts and i think two of them were dark side of the moon and i got one myself to and, see pictures made and the, yeah and and the the other one was animals yeah. Like, dude, that I dig that cover. I, I did know, that I just so I would have promo shots for mm-hmm. the Fluid series, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, like this, this could be like a pocket. Like, wait, what's ranking the Pink Floyd artwork or something like that? Mm. Do wish you were here, man, with the shaking hands with the burning guy on the. Oh yeah, you know the, well, the just Hollywood like, studio. Um, how timeless it is! Like somebody took all like that over the on air sign. Somebody took all Panics albums. With Mikey Hauser, the original guitar player, and put him on the mm. the ladies. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think you told me about. Yeah, that. yeah, right. yeah. It's because uh, it looks like Floyd, but then you start looking at it, it's Panic's album cover. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they call it Panic Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, all right, dude. Well, let's uh, wrap it up okay. and. Um, uh, always a pleasure. My yeah, friend. well, thanks for having me on, man. I love doing this. This yeah. is great. I could probably talk about music forever, and I know the internet's like, God, why? Yeah, oh, hey, man. we've got uh, that. Well, really, it's long. We just so, they keep revisiting your uh, thesis uh, podcast. Yeah, with that. yeah, that's that's <laughs> true. Posting all kinds of comments that I'm like, man, you've spent a lot of time writing that. That out. is a big but, one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, okay, you know, and w- that will be addressed. That will absolutely be addressed. So that'll happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> have Have you ever thought about like putting like, like, like just putting your name out there, like Brian Wilson reviews this record or whatnot, and so like a bunch of old people click on it, thinking it's like the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson. I, I and, have not thought about and, and, that. And, and instead, they're just greeted by millennials, <clears> right? <throat> just talking about their music. Yeah, that would be hilarious, <laughs> dude. I like I was at the muffler shop the other day, and the guy was like, like the Beach Boy, and I was just like. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> it's funny. But, dude, everywhere I go since I was, like, five years old. Yeah. Like, quite literally. It's insane. But um, th- that's why I can't really get my own website and stuff like that, you know? Like, that name is really, like, it's milked. Like, yeah. You know, and he's yeah, still alive, too. So, yeah, like, right, I'm, right. I'm just not going to be able to do anything with my name for a while. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh so yeah, we'll be back soon awesome. with uh, yeah, absolutely I'm with more, and we're going to do the Beatles that's and right. a bunch of other stuff. So that's music right. unravel, baby. All right, signing off. All right.